Hello guys and welcome to the Laputra YouTube channel and our today's topic is Hans Kelsen's Pure Theory of Law in Jurisprudence. I am Jagannath Kulkarni. Who is Hans Kelsen? He born in 1881 and died in 1973. He was born on 11th October 1881 at Prague, Austria. He was an Austrian jurist. He was a professor of law at Vienna University. He was a judge in Supreme Constitutional Court of Austria from 1920 to 1930. In the year 1945, he developed this, he developed and published this the general theory of law and the state. He died on Thursday, 19 April 1973. Now let us see what is his pure theory of law in jurisprudence. We know that uh, hierarchy of norms and John Austin, what he has advocated was imperative theory of legal positivism. This is Kelson's pure theory of law is improvement upon John Austin's imperative theory and who rejected the idea of natural law. He says that law need not be imperative. There is no difference between state and law. This is what Kelson has advocated and law includes within customs. There is no difference between public law and private law. And international law is a law and which is over and above municipal law or state law. Because it will cover the many countries, it will cover a wider population, it has to have the bigger hierarchy than municipal law or state law. In very clear and very pertinent words Kelson has mentioned about the pure theory of law. He said pure theory of law means that it is concerned solely with that part of knowledge which deals with law including from such knowledge everything which does not strictly belonging to the subject matter of law. That is it endeavors to free the science of law from all foreign elements. And this is its fundamental methodological principle. And this is the purest theory of law, pure theory of law. He said that the pure theory of law must deal with law as it is actually laid down and not as it ought to be. So there is a difference between legal art and the actual art. This, this theory should be uniform. It should be applicable to all times in all places. This is what is termed as the general jurisprudence and generalizations which hold good over a very wide area. And that is why the international law has got bigger prominence according to Kelson. He said that this pure theory of law should must be it must be from it must be emanated from ethics, politics, sociology, history, etc. It must be pure. And he did not deny the value of ethics, politics, history, sociology, etc. But his theory of law was clear of those considerations. His aim is to reduce chaos and multiplicity to unity. And this pure theory of law is science. It is not volition. It is knowledge of what the law is and not what the law ought to be. So whatever may be ought to be, we will explain or we will mention what is the law. We will not ask you that you should not murder. We say if you murder, you will be punished. That's it. Law is a normative science, but law norms of being of ease that is seen while the law norms are art that is solemn. Law does not attempt to describe what actually occurs. It only prescribes certain rule, like just we have mentioned that you should not commit the crime, we won't say. We would say if you commit the crime, we, the, there is a penalty, there is penal action. And it is not concerned with effectiveness of legal norms. And in relation of legal theory to a particular system of positive law is that of possible to actual law. And knowledge of law is knowledge of norms. This is the proposition in hypothetical form. And science of law consists of examination of nature and organization of this normative proposition. 
science of law is knowledge of hierarchy of normative relation and, and builds on the theory of knowledge and it extends this theoretical knowledge into law actually what is the task of legal theory it is to clarify relations between fundamental norms and all lower norms but not to say whether this fundamental norm itself is good or bad whatever we have considered as a norm fundamental norm we have to abide by it and task it is the task of who that whether the fundamental norm is good or bad it is the task of political science ethics or religion principle according to which natural science describes its object is causality but the principle according to which science of law describes its object is normativity and there is a distinction between legal arts which are backed by force remember it is the law force and other art refers to a command which does not imply a wide psychological sense of form it is also there that in every legal system you take any legal system in the world no matter with what proposition of law we start and hierarchy of art is traceable to some initial or fundamental art from which all others emanate and this is known as what the kelson has mentioned what the kelson has described as the grund norm the basic norm the fundamental norm which may not be the same in every legal system but it is always there and every rule of law derives its efficacy from some other rule standing behind it but the grund norm the fundamental norm the basic norm has no rule behind it because the legislature has described it it is the initial hypothesis upon which the whole system rests it cannot account for validity or existence of grund norm by possibility of another rule of law it is justification for rest of the legal system so whatever law we will enact we should check it with the grund norm or the fundamental norm and what is the task of legal theory as already mentioned it is to clarify relations between grund norm and all other inferior norms or lower norms and not to enter into questions of goodness or badness it can be categorized as minimum effectiveness which it possesses and there is no criterion by which this minimum of effectiveness is to be measured and this grund norm is the starting point in any legal system and the rest of that legal system is considered as broadening down in gradations from it from this grund norm and becoming progressively more and more detailed and specific entire process is one of the gradual concentration of this basic norm fundamental norm grund norm and the focusing of law to all other situations this is the basic difference in the moral norms and legal norms see what a person should do or should not do this is one norm this is the moral norm and as we mentioned if a person does any act omission also against the norm then he will be punished by that statute and this is the moral norm and this is the legal norm remember this let us summarize what this pure theory of law is aim of theory of law is to reduce chaos and multiplicity to unit it is a legal theory it's science it is not volition it is knowledge of what law is and what not it should to be the law is normative it is not a natural science legal theory is a theory of norms and it is not concerned with effectiveness of legal norms a theory of law is formal a theory of why way of ordering changing contents and the relation of legal theory to a particular system of positive law is possible to actual law let us consider one case law this is very famous case in jailalitha versus union of india it is 1994 case wherein supreme court held that the constitution is a supreme in india constitution of india which was published in 1950 is a supreme and it is even above it is supreme than even the mandate of public and the advocate for jailalitha kk venugopal he contended 
that Jayalalitha and her party get the brutal majority and it is the mandate of people which is superior and so she cannot be removed. This is what the advocate advocated contended. But the Supreme Court rejected this contention and it said the constitution is supreme. Therefore, in India, a basic norm could be termed as constitution. All other enactments, maybe it Indian Penal Code, maybe it is a Code of Criminal Procedure, Code of Civil Procedure or any other enactments, we should check it with the validity to the constitution and that is our norm in India constitution. In one sentence, the pure theory of law says the law will stand on its own. And with this, we conclude this topic. Thank you. This was the Hans Kelsen's Pure Theory of Law in Jurisprudence. Thank you.